Paul, let's get after our next stock out there, which is Barry Global. Oh, we're doing Barry? What, can we, Paul? Oh, uh, yeah, sure. Uh, B-E-R-Y. Yeah, let's look up Barry I had Rocket Global. Mortgage. I think Rocket Mortgage we should do. We are going to do Rocket Mortgage uh, okay. to, today, but let's get after Barry Barry Global, Global. Uh, manufactures and sells plastic packaging products in three di- di- um, segments based on the product type. Okay, so plastic cups, things like that. What is the market cap, baby? $6.9 billion, Let's call it $7 billion market cap. P.E. 12.4. Check mark there. Profit margin. Six and a half. Uh-oh. X. And it looks pretty consistent over the last year and no dividend. So we have one check and one X on Barry Global. Where are they located? Indiana. Mm, Indiana, yeah. Revenue growth. Pillar number three. Revenue growth over the past five years. 6.5 to 11.7. Yeah. And I will say this. I have to think somewhere in here there was some acquisitions. Because these are big jumps over a few years and it's plastic it's not like that's a super sexy business. Flip Cup is going nuts on college you campuses, right, Paul. So take a look at it. It's still a check mark. But, but right take off, a look at right it. Right off the bat, if you're following at home, when we get to pillar number eight, which is our price to free cash flow, we may up our uh, our, our multiple for a fast growing company like we'll this. So we'll see. How about uh, profit growth, pillar number four? Two thirty six to five fifty nine. Check one. mark there. Okay, great. Yeah. Great. Yeah. yeah. So they're definitely growing on that number. Pillar number five is shares outstanding. Wow. Is going the down. Rare X. Uh oh. One twenty to one thirty. Two. That's a that's a what, ten percent increase in shares. That means for every share you owned five years ago, you own ten percent less of the company, nine percent less of the company now. How about current assets better than current liabilities? Greater than current liabilities. I mean, okay, total current assets three point eight billion, current liabilities two point one. Chicken check there. Boy, a lot of debt though. Fourteen point six billion dollars in debt. It looks like a lot of debt, but we'll look at it later. Pillar but it's still a check mark on that one. Pillar number thirteen. What am I saying? I'm reading. I'm reading a comment that says thirteen. Pillar number thirteen doesn't exist. Pillar number seven is free cash flow. Okay, free cash flow. Ready? Yep. Um, basically five seventy to one billion. Good lord. So check mark there. Nice. Okay. And then, and then, uh, call it seven hundred. Mm-hmm. Call it 700, call it 800. So the average free cash flow is 750 million. Billion, a million, yes. So this company is look like it's doing awesome, Paul. Uh, yeah, I kind of like this. 750 million, and it's currently selling for 6 billion, was it? 7 billion. The company's currently selling for 7 billion? 7 billion is the so market cap. So it's less than 10 times the average of the last five years, and the, and the last year was a big increase. Um, <laughs> You likey? Yeah, we likey. So, it's, here. so what we did, folks, if you're, again, um, this is usually the step where we lose people, but we came up with the free cash flow of $750 million. Then we come up with a multiple to get to the desired market cap we want to pay. And a lot of times that multiple is 15 20 For Tesla, it's 1400 But for this company, it's only 10 which puts us right Not in, even. It's not like, even. It's, it's not even 10 So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to look up it's 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 um, options to see if it has good options that I can buy into for for my February strike price. February puts. So what I'm gonna do here, guys? Okay, so the company's currently selling at fifty one dollars a share. Oh wow, look at this. Yeah, this leads us into Dijon's question: is besides the eight pillars, what else can we look at to make some decisions? Um, I would say, Paul, someone else commented that. It kind of looks like we come up with free cash flow and make our final decision. Free cash flow is a big factor for me. It's not the final say, but the other ones were pretty good. The PE was low. I'm okay with the profit margin being low in a company like this. I figured it would be. Um, they've got revenue growth. Now, one thing I do want to look at is acquisitions. Let's see how, how, how active they are with acquisitions. And this is Barry Global, if you're just jump, jumping in. Barry Global. So look Indiana. at that. They made a couple of big acquisitions in the last few years. They have a lot of debt. So... The thing I would tell you guys is there's no, there's no decision made on a company on the eight pillars, but they have a lot of debt. They have 14 billion debt on $11 billion in revenue. That's a lot of debt with only net income of, what was their net income? A billion dollars? They don't have it. Their net income last year was, no, $560 million. So it's not very good. Now, the other thing is I want to make a point of their free cash flow is way low, way higher than their net income. You have to figure out why that is. Because over long periods of time, free cash flow and net income should be very similar. In the last five years, their, their average net income has been about $350 million, but their free cash flow has been seven fifty, so over double. So you want to figure out why that is. Uh, eight, That's always a good thing if you can figure out a good reason why the free cash, because nobody ever looks at free cash flow. 
That's why I look at it. Nobody ever looks at free cash flow. So if you're finding a big difference between the two, it could be an opportunity. Hey, Bittler's asking, what if we take a look at operating cash flow in this case? Operating income, you mean? Oh, uh, yeah, sorry. Let's look at that. That's a good question. So I have talked about operating income. Oh, wow. Big jumps. 613, 756, 787, 842, 1.258. Damn, I kind of like this, but I don't like the debt. Is yeah, Trader uh, Mo uh, on? Other, other people are asking. Yeah, Trader Mo's on. Other uh, uh, Mo, what do you think? Other people are asking, you know, is that is that debt should be a concern? They said, Shane says they have 10 years. I don't know what that means, but yeah. Um, we need to look at the 10K here because Barry has a good, Barry, I like it. I just don't like that debt number. We get to figure out what's causing that debt with such low margin and high debt. I mean, $14 billion in debt is a lot of debt for a company that makes $500 million a year. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and before their interest expense, their EBIT income is 1.158. So their ratio is pretty freaking high. Did I get that, that, that total debt number right? Or was I wrong? Yeah, 14.6. Jeez, oh, Pete, it really jumped up. You know why? When they made that acquisition, I bet you it was all debt. Ken's saying, what about price to book? Would that help? Um, let's look at that. I mean, price to book. Let's see what the price to book is. Oh. um, 3.3. A little high for manufacturers of stuff. Oh, I see. Shane's saying, yeah, they have 10 years to pay off the debt they have now. It would take them 10 years, so. Net debt is only 10 bill, Mar Marcel's saying, so. Um, net debt is only 10 billion because of the cash on hand. Is that the reason why? 3.8. I mean, look at their total loan. I mean, ugh. property, plant, and equipment. It's been written off a lot. Okay, so the bottom line is, guys, I, that's the big question for me here. Mm -hmm. The free cash flow multiple is great. That's the big question. Debt is how you have to go figure out, okay, what is their debt? Why do they have it? Are they paying? It looks like they have been paying it down the last few years, but not by a lot, a few hundred million dollars a year. It's not a ton. And if their goal is to always just refinance, 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 it's like, yeah, in this environment with low interest rates, it's great. But what about 10 years from now when the debt comes due? What if, it, what if we had such high inflation, they raise rates to 7 8%. They triple, quadruple from here. You're going to have a problem. So we have to figure that out.